Here's a way to build your own 28 megahertz dipole for 10 meters. Now, whether you're a beginner or an experienced ham, this simple and effective antenna can be a great addition to your gear. You're going to need a length of wire. Use stranded wire if you can, because it'll be easier to work with. I'm gonna be using 18 gauge hookup wire because that's what I have on hand, and it's gonna work just fine. You're gonna need a center insulator, and I'm using a banana plug to BNC RF coax splitter. You will need some coax cable. I'm using a 25 foot section of RG8X with BNC connectors. It's a pre-made cable that I purchased online. For this dipole, you're going to need 17 feet six inches of wire. Cut in half, that'll make each leg eight feet nine inches long. I want this antenna to operate on FT8 or other digital modes, so the frequency I'm aiming for is 28.074. A quick tip, if you want to use this antenna for phone portion of the band later on, we can shorten the wires later to tune this to a higher frequency. I put links in the description below for a few apps and web antenna calculators that could help you with building a future antenna project. Now I'm gonna be using a free app on my Android phone called the Antenna Tool. When I enter in the frequency of 28.074, the Antenna Tool shows me that to operate on this frequency, the calculator shows I'll need 16 feet, eight and one sixteenth of an inch. That seems pretty exact, but we're not gonna to cut to just that size. I know I want extra wire for tuning the antenna and for making loops on the ends of the dipole for guying. So I'm rounding that measurement up to 17 feet, six inches, for the overall length. I wanna cut the wire in half so I have eight feet, nine inches for each side of the antenna. Take one end from each of the wire and strip back the insulation about one inch or so. Now I'm gonna use a wire stripper. You can use whatever tool you have. Just try not to clip or cut any of the wires, making it thinner than it already is. Grabbing the wire and twisting it like this is gonna help make a good connection at the RF splitter. And when I wrap it around the post like this, it's gonna tighten down nicely. I'm going to attach one wire to the red post and one wire to the black post. It really doesn't matter what wire goes to each post, they're all the same. Tighten down those screw terminals and you're done. Taking the other end of the dipole wires and measuring back five inches from the end and folding it back on itself will create a small loop that we're going to use to guide this. Make the loop about the size of your finger. I'll take the excess wire and wrap it around the main wire keeping the loop from coming apart while we're testing the antenna. I'm keeping the wraps of the loop fairly loose so I can make the adjustments more easily. And once I have the antenna tuned, I can tighten up the winded ends and even tape it down if I wanted to. I'm using a section of RG8 coax for this setup. You can use any coax that you have for this antenna. The heavier the coax you have, the more difficult it's gonna to be to get that thing higher up in the air. If your coax has PL259 connectors, you'll need an SO239 to BNC female adapter, like this one, to connect to your RF splitter, link below. Now I drilled a small hole in the center insulator so I could put a small loop of paracord through the hole. Now I can use this to raise up the antenna in the air or hook it onto something else. Line Winder is a valuable little device that will keep your wire organized and make it easy to put your wire out for deployment and to put the wire back, keeping it for another time that you wanna set up. It's time to get outside with the analyzer and see how close we are to 28074. The center of the antenna should be about eight feet off the ground, about a quarter wave in the air for 10 meters. And because I don't have any other mast or trees, I'm gonna be using an inverted V setup with the legs of the antenna going out to about a 45 degree angle towards the ground. This will be a really good setup for testing and tuning the antenna. The antenna is up about eight feet in the air. It's all we really need to do, just so that I can get a reading to know if we're close to having this antenna tuned. All right, the lowest part of the band is 28.9 for a 1.2, so we're way far off. So longer is lower, shorter is higher. So we've got to go longer on the antenna. All right, so I extended the antenna about four inches longer and that took us down to 27 megahertz. So something about in the middle, is gonna get us close to uh, being on target. All right, splitting the difference got us back to 28.4. So now we're at the phone part of the band where we might normally operate. We need to go a little bit longer to get down to 28 even.
I wear gloves, but you can't feel anything when you're out here doing that. So instead, I just won't feel anything at all. Twenty-eight at 1.9. We're getting really close. So 190 is probably still not close enough. So we're gonna go just a little bit lower. Okay, we're 1.2 to 1 at 27.9. So basically 2800 megahertz. And that's perfect for what we're gonna use. If we need to operate at a higher frequency, we just shorten the ends of the antenna to get to the frequency we are looking for. And that's how you can build a 10 meter dipole antenna for a winter project. Links below for everything I used in this video. Now check out one of these videos for more antenna projects that you can do.